All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, it's our pleasure to, to be out here and uh, teach you guys a little bit about bats and, and more of what's, what's going on in Aiken County with the bats out here. So um, I'll just jump right into it. I'm going to kind of dispel a couple of myths real quick on what are bats. So here's a, here's a beautiful picture of one of your common bats here in, in Aiken County. Uh, it's called the Eastern Red Bat. But um, basically what I hear a lot when I tell people that I'm a bat biologist or I study bats and they're like, you know, what are you, why are you studying flying mice? They're just flying mice and they do all that. Well, they're not. They are their own uh, subset of a mammal. They do give live birth. They do produce milk. And they have hair, obviously. Uh, that, that is all hair right there and skin along their wings. Um, they're about the same size as mice, but that's, that's about the only comparable characteristic. Uh, differing from mice, they have a a much long, longer lifespan, whereas mice and rats are, you know, typically a couple of years, and they're they're basically food for everything else, for hawks and snakes and all the other predators. They 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 reproduce quickly. They reproduce in a lot of them too, and they just keep keep the food system going. Bats, on the other hand, uh, reproduce one pup every year, so they don't they don't really replenish their stock except for once a year, and that's one time, and they only have one pup. They can have twins, but more commonly, they just have one pup. Um, and they live a lot longer, too. Because they hibernate uh, in the winter, they spend about half their lives hibernating and basically shut down from the world. Um, so they're not dying after a couple of years of being out there. They're, they're living close to 10 years. And in some aspects, we've, uh, we've uh, found a banded bat that was 40 years old. So. In a cave, we found it, and we went back to the records and saw the band number, and it was a bat that was 40 years old. So they live very long, but they reproduce very slowly. So when bats are endangered or, or, or in trouble or, or being killed, it's, it's a much bigger impact than, say, when you kill a couple of mice in your mouse traps. So they're not flying mice. They're more like flying elephants. Um, the other question I get all the time is, do I have rabies, and how much rabies do I have, and if I'm spreading it, and if I'm just scared of rabies all the time. I'm not. I've, I've got uh, my vaccinations about 10 years ago, and that's all I've had to do. I just got tested before this season, and I'm still, my levels are still good. Um, not all bats carry rabies. That's a, a common misconception, and it's actually a lot less than other animals that you guys are a lot more familiar with, say raccoons or skunks or, or foxes. Um, it's estimated that only about 1% of wild bats have rabies. Um, that's a very, very low number because um, we, what happened was that there was a study that was done that was um, all the sent in bats to the CDC were tested for, what it, for what, how many bats had rabies. And it was a very low number, about 10%. And that's only bats that were sent in. And bats that are sent in are typically sick animals already. So in the wild, it's, it's uh, estimated about 1%. Now, if you do find a, a bat or an a abnormally acting bat in your house, then it might, it's most likely sick and you probably need to either kill it or remove it from your house. Don't ever touch it without gloves because you don't want to go through the, the end process of getting a bunch of shots. And it's, not, no longer, it's no longer 21 days of shots in the stomach, but it's just a, it's just a repeatable shot. Um, so never touch a bat without a thick glove because they do bite and they can't break the skin. Um, the other thing is keep bats away from children. Kids are a lot more curious and a lot less fearful than you know, our ingrown fears that we've gotten over, over years of experience. My daughter loves spiders, and she just runs after all of them. But where I live in Colorado, there's a lot of black widows. So you gotta, gotta teach them to <laughs> be scared, but not be too scared. So they don't all have rabies. They're, they're pretty safe. I handle a lot of bats, and I get bit a lot. And it's not, I've never once worried about rabies. The other thing, they're not all vampire bats. This is a cute picture showing that he's not a ferocious vampire bat. Uh, we don't have vampire bats here in North America, um, ex except for in the extreme Southwest, all bats in North America are uh, insectivores. Um, in the extreme Southwest, they eat nectar. So unless you're a cactus or a plant, you have nothing to worry about. Um, they just they eat bugs, and a lot of them. Um, it's estimated that in the agricultural community, and this is a low, low end here, uh, that bats save roughly $3 billion a year in pest control. And that number jumps up to about 50, million, or 50 billion on the high end. 
um, because they eat so many bugs and so many pest bugs out there. Um, a single little brown bat, and I'll show you a picture in a little bit of, of what that species looks like. They're about the size body-wise of my thumb. They're, they're very tiny. Their wingspan's a little bit bigger, but they can eat four to eight grams of insects in a night. Now, if you take that over a million bats, that's about 660 to, to 1,300 metric tons of bat or of insects uh, each year. So if we lose that many bats, which there's a fungus going around, which I'll talk about in a little bit, called white nose syndrome, and we've had uh, many millions of bats die out east in the northeast. That's what they're they're now 1,300 metric tons of more insects out there from those bats being being killed off by this fungus. So they're a great great boost to the economy because of how much they save on pest control for, for agriculture. Um, and they're great. I mean, people don't like mosquitoes, right? They, they eat mosquitoes, so there's a lot of them here in Aiken County, I can tell you that. Bats or mosquitoes? <laughs> Both. <laughs> uh, I just want to describe the bat itself a little bit before I get into what species we have around here. So. As you can see, this is a, another eastern red bat. They're just very photogenic and very, very cute. Um, here is the upper arm. So if I'm, if I'm a bat right here, that's, that's my arm right here. That right there is their forearm. And so basically, they have like really strong upper arms and then really kind of elongated forearms. These, that's its index finger, middle finger, and or that's the index and middle and then ring and pinky. And so basically what they have is, it's very different from birds where that bone is fused and they just kind of have a long, long elongated bone with feathers coming down and they just, everything is all in this, in this bone. They have they spread out fingers and so basically they're short and stubby like this with long, long fingers and then they're just constantly flapping. So unlike birds, that's all skin right there and it's attached, it's basically like this little skin here stretched to your fingertips. And right there is a thumb that's got a claw on it, and that's how they kind of maneuver around when they're hanging upside down and uh, climbing in their roost and stuff. But uh, that skin is attached from their wing all the way down, and they've got a little tail, and the skin kind of goes all around there. And basically, they're constantly flapping. They can't soar or glide uh, anywhere near the levels of birds can because of those feathers. And so they're constantly moving and constantly eating because when they're doing that, they're burning so much energy and they have to just keep moving. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen bats flying out and out on your patio and stuff and they're flapping like crazy and then all of a sudden they make a quick dart. That's them attacking something. They've, they've heard something they go right to it. Um, yeah, and so also what they'll do, it's kind of a little cool thing. Uh, with their tails, they kind of can create a little bucket and so when they're flying they'll and they're about to eat a moth or something, they'll, they'll run up or fly up on it and catch it with its tail and then scoop it up to its mouth so they don't even catch it right on the fly. I mean, they, they can, but a lot of times you'll see them catch things with their tail and then scoop it right up to their mouth. Now I'm going to jump into the different bats that you guys have here in Aiken County. And this is actually uh, pretty much the bats that are in Minnesota. Um, there's the tricolored bat, the big brown bat, silver-haired, Eastern red bat, hoary bat, northern long-eared bat, and the little brown bat. And I'll go over these in a little bit. Um, but basically, yeah, there's seven bats here. Um, you know, if you get a, move a little bit east, there's a few more different species that occur. And if you move a little bit west, there's a couple of different species that occur out west as well. So this is the tricolored bat. This is the smallest bat that you guys have in Minnesota and in Aiken County. There's couple of different species out in, in North America that are, are, are a little bit smaller than that, but this guy's a little fella. I mean, honestly, body size, not much bigger than that. And then wings, like if you're holding up the wings spread apart about like that, you get them in your hand and they're, they're pretty cute. They get, they, get, they, get, they get really mad, but when they bite it, you can't even feel it. So it's kind of fun to just let them bite you and not have them feel it. Um, as you noticed on that previous page, uh, all these bats are named after their colorations, basically. So tricolored bat, if you spread apart its fur, it's got uh, kind of three distinct bands that are different colors, and that's, that's why we name them. They're, this next one is, is really obvious. It's called a big brown bat. And he's pretty big. He's not, obviously not nearly that big, but he'll fit in your hand. And uh, I call it when I go out netting and I catch these guys, because I'm used to catching the smaller ones, I call them werewolves because they they're ferocious. They're, they eat beetles out there, um, and they've got big teeth and big, big, strong jaws, and they'll bite through your glove, and 
They can draw a little blood if you're, if you're not careful. So um, they're pretty good. But they're, they're the most common bat that we have out here. And they go all the way from New England out to, out to Washington. They're, they're all over North America. Um, when you guys are sitting on your patio or if you have someone you know that has bats in their barn, this is most likely the species that are there. They're really common and they like to, they like to cluster together in huge groups. So these are also the problem bats for, for people's homes and stuff. This is the silver-haired bat. This is, um, again, it's a very easy description. It's got black hair, but then on the back, much like a silverback gorilla, it's got a little frosted tips on the back of its, um, on the back of its fur there. Um, these guys aren't as common, but we've actually been catching them out here. They're, they're pretty fun. I haven't seen them for a couple of years, so it's been nice to catch them up here. They're more migratory bats. Um, the other bats that I'm going to focus on and talk about most about are, are hibernating bats, but these bats will migrate to warmer temperatures and just kind of go down, really just to, down to the southeast. They won't go to like Central America or anything, but they'll go down to um, Arkansas and stuff. And what they do is to hibernate. It's kind of cool, actually. Um, they fly into the, to the forest floor just by themselves, wrap themselves in a leaf, and then they'll stay there all, all winter long. And it's a crazy strategy. You wouldn't think it would work because anything can eat them when they're just laying there, but there's millions of these bats, and they do that, and it works out pretty well. So, Then in the spring, it's, I, uh, I've actually been fortunate enough to see uh, one emerge out. I was just kind of walking through the woods, and it just sprung up. I mean, you don't think that they're not very agile on the ground. Once they hit the ground, they're, they're pretty immobile, but this one sprung up, and then it just took off right from there. So it was frightening, but very cool. You guys are pretty familiar with these now after my other couple of pictures. These are eastern red bats. They're, they're about a little bit smaller than the big brown bat. Um, they're just about as ferocious, but they don't bite nearly as hard. Uh, you can see the teeth there. They're not, near, they're not anything like rodent teeth, where rodents have the buck teeth. These guys eat only insects, like that previous slide said. Um, and so they have teeth that match their diet. They've got just a row. They look like lion's teeth out there. They just have a row of sharp teeth that that go on forever, but they're, they're made for, you know, once they bite onto something, they hold onto it, and then they can munch it in air and just keep on going with their night so they don't have to stop and uh, pick away at it. These guys eat beetles and moths and stuff, too. You know, I was talking about how they eat mosquitoes and stuff. Mosquitoes are kind of a great appetizer for bats. Um, they're, not, they're not very substantial because, as you guys know, when a mosquito lands on you, it's basically just wings, you know, a nose and wings. And so they're, they hit them up. When, uh, when they first come out at night, and they kind of use them as an appetizer, go get some, go get some water, and then they hit the, the big stuff like big moths and beetles that, that are out there. Um, you'd be surprised, you know, if you've lived in this area forever, and you may know, but, you know, I've lived in, you know, Indiana and Colorado and stuff, and I didn't know until I started netting the types of bugs that are commonly out there at night flying around that you don't even see. So we set up these nets, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, frequently, we walk up to those nets, and there's a huge, like, stag beetle right there that's ready to just grab onto you and hurt you real bad. <laughs> but these guys eat those, and you know you don't even see those flying around until until they're in your nets. 